Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Unapologetically Joy. My name is Joy, I'm the host of this podcast and today we got another special guest and that is Roland Ferment and he's a brain and marketing expert from the Netherlands. He's graduated from the University of Groningen in neuropsychology and after that he started his own clinic called Neurobix, specialized in neurofeedback. And a friend of mine introduced him to me and uh, I found it really funny because he's actually uh, from Groningen and that's really close to my hometown, Drachten. We talked about what is neurofeedback and how can neurofeedback benefit someone with ADHD, autism or a sleeping disorder. Are there any side effects? And are you not taking someone's power too? For example, with someone with autism, they have really a hyper focus. So I was really curious about that. But uh, before we go to the episode, uh, please follow us on Spotify, subscribe on our YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. And uh, don't forget to leave five stars. Uh, It really helps me to uh, boost my podcast. So uh, thank you so much. And uh, let's go to the episode. Enjoy. Welcome to the podcast, Roland. Hi, thank you. <laughs> thank you for uh, inviting me for the podcast. Of course. And uh, it's a pleasure. So... Of course. Uh, thank you for coming. And first, I would like to start with uh, what is neurofeedback? Okay. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I always struggle to summarize it because it's uh, basically something you should experienced several times before like in uh, we we call it in that uh, in dutch like um the quarter drops the part you <laughs> uh so so um but um it, it's a form of uh, conditioning brain activity uh so your brain has uh, activity in the sen- in the form of electrical waves the brain waves, or the it's also called EEG, electroencephalogram, and um, these waves tell something about the state of your brain at the uh, current time. Uh, that's why, for example, it's used for um, sleep uh, monitoring. When somebody has a sleep disturbance, they are um, often uh, measured uh, on the brain. They get electrodes on the brain. And then uh, the sleep patterns are observed. So your brain uh, has more slow waves when you're in a deeper sleep phase and uh, has somewhat uh, faster waves in lighter sleep phases. And when you're fully awake, it has, again, different brain patterns. Mm -hmm. And uh, with neurofeedback, you measure these brain patterns and what they tell about the activity of your brain. If your brain is, for example, alert or um, uh, foggy or um, uh, yeah, absent-minded. All these things can be, to a certain part, the degree be observed. Mm. But the thing with neurofeedback is that you don't only observe, but you're actually going to condition or to train your brain activity. Mm. That is, um, it, it makes use of con- uh, operant conditioning. Mm. And that op- op- operant conditioning is like, um, basically, um, you have a behavior and you get a reward. Mm. So, uh, for example, uh, your teacher uh, in uh, grammar school can give you a reward when you um, make a sum in, in the right way. Or, um, but more um, clearly, it's, it, for example, with dog or dolphin training, when the dog uh, or dolphin behaves like we want, we can make a click or we, um, a whistle with a flute, and this will stimulate like a reward system in the brain of, of the um, dolphin or the dog. And in the same way, um, you can also condition or stimulate brain activity. So I can measure your brain, and when your brain, for example, has more relaxing brain activity, I can stimulate this with a reward, for example, a short sound. And I tell the client, when you hear this sound, your brain is more uh, in a, in, is in a more correct st- state. Mm. And in this way, you, bra- you directly train the brain activity. And it's, it has been, it's a proven uh, concept mm. that 
in this way, people can alter their brain state. And you can um, alter the brain state in this way to s different types. Okay. So, um, Be good for everybody. Yes, basically, uh, it, it is something that uh, anyone, in, anyone with <laughs> a brain can, can do. And, um, uh, but yeah, usually it is meant as a therapy for people with certain disorder or certain complaints. But actually, anyone can do neurofeedback, for example, to improve focus uh, or to improve um, uh, relaxation levels to improve meditation performance all, all these things can be trained mm -hmm. uh, in in this uh, way and that's called uh, when you do it for performance and enhancement they call it uh, peak performance mm. and how many times we have to do this to get results or do we have to come back every time um yeah the, the nice thing is that uh, this condition you you learn the brain to alter its state um, and the nice thing is that um, it's somehow it's ingrained in the brain uh, so you don't have to do it continuously it's not like a, for example with um, ADHD they give Ritalin for example it's a short acting thing when it's out of your blood all the effects are gone no but with the brain conditioning it's somehow it's um, yeah, learned by the brain and your brain can um, uh, can keep this uh, this state. And it's not like you will, if you for example train a concentration state that somebody will stay the rest of the life in this concentrated state. But it's like the brain remembers this concentrated state, and when when indeed your brain has to perform concentration, it can somehow trigger this this uh, this same brain pattern okay so how many times do we need to do this to get this yeah. pattern um yeah well for example um they call it the 24-hour solution for adhd okay. so that's uh, a rough estimate like 20 hours of conditioning will bring up usually big changes but some people are super responsive and they uh, i have had um people with sleep conditions like in insomnia and they uh, do one, even only two sessions and she uh, got rid of this. Maybe it's also like a part, uh, uh, yeah, so, sort of placebo because it was so mm -hmm. fast. On the other hand, she tried all kinds of therapies for and also had sleep monitoring, medication, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and so it definitely for part the, the neurofeedback process itself. Some have uh, only net, only need five. Two is like, like exceptional, but already quite fast. It's like three to five, and uh, but on general, people need like ten, fifteen, or sometimes twenty sessions, and in rare uh, conditions, uh, even more. Well, and because uh, what you told, anyone can do it, even if you are basically uh, treated from your condition, you can just continue uh, doing it because you like it and because you to improve other mm -hmm. stuff so some people come really uh, uh really often nice and are there any side effects yeah yeah there are temporal side effects like uh, headaches like uh, um for sometimes people will have like a, a extreme tiredness after the mm -hmm. training like um um and because because yeah the training is quite passive you you uh, but still your brain is working hard and it can feel uh, as if you uh, had a, s a strong study session, like you know this you your eyes are uh, reddish and 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 you feel like super um, uh, tired. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes if I that's also my role as a therapist, I can cho choose the the wrong or the not super optimized training uh, for somebody. Of course, I try to um, uh, limit it this, and it, it's uh, rare. But somebody and the, and the um, side effects are not severe. But it can be that somebody has uh, two, or one or two nights uh, insomnia. That they, they cannot sleep because I train their focus, and somehow it's triggered too much, and then they just have a really active mind, and they cannot um, 
uh, they cannot uh, tranquilize, they cannot uh, stop the activity. But then the next time they come, I can change the the session, um, the wave patterns that they train, and then they calm down again. Wow. It's so amazing because I also have a friend who also has uh, insomnia and she tried everything. She tried um, hypnotherapy, um, yeah, all kinds of medicines, you know. So this mm -hmm. is a good thing for her to try. Yeah. Yes, it could, mm -hmm. could definitely uh, be a, a, a good uh, thing. And uh, she's probably then familiar with the whole EEG because uh, probably she went to these research uh, labs to sleep uh, with these uh, EEG electrodes. Mm -hmm. on. Yeah, I think so. I will ask her. And you can also do it on distance, right? Yeah, that, that's the new development. Uh, I work with a new system now. And uh, with this system, it's a four-channel EEG system. Uh, I can train anyone uh, in the world, basically. Um, but uh, at the moment, I train uh, mostly people in uh, Holland, of course. Um, but because but my clinic is in Groningen, and um, but that due to this new development, I now start also to have uh, clients in uh, Amsterdam and Rotterdam. And uh, lately, I even had a client that uh, was in New York, and then uh, I see her uh, New York brainwaves. <laughs> Passing by, that there was a, was a special wow. uh, to, to to see. <laughs> but do you send some so. something to her before you start the treatment, or can you do it on just on video call? Um, yeah, I uh, at the moment I work with a full EEG uh, system to do the intake. It means that, uh, like with the sleep uh, studies, you, um, I measure the brain activity on like twenty points. And and plus I have of course an interview of like uh, what are your complaints and what uh, do you want to reach with the neurofeedback treatment, and um, then I send them or give them the equipment and they can uh, start after that, and I have video calls with them and I monitor their brain activity through the internet while they are training. Uh, to um, to keep the quality and uh, guidance to, towards the clients. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, I try to copy what I do in a clinic, um, a one on one with the distance neurofeedback. Right. And uh, the, the software developers um, that make the cloud neurofeedback software, they also implemented recently a system where with the four channel systems that I use for the home neurofeedback, people can do the intake even at home. Mm. And so that means that um, I don't uh, have to go to these uh, clients, uh, but I have to become familiar, familiar with this new system and learn to trust it because I'm used to do the full EEGs, um, which are still, I think, the best option. But I think with, um, normal uh, quote quote uh, ADHD and normal sleep disorder the four channel intake would definitely uh, be sufficient mm, that's so nice and how can we use this for meditation do you also use it for yourself um yeah but um uh, it, it, it's like the plumber who doesn't uh, work on his own house <laughs> uh, <No>. it's like a <laughs> like a i um at, at the moment i make incredibly much hours and i definitely need it but i don't it's like i have trouble taking the time to do it on myself mm. so that's why um i that's also my role as a therapist towards my clients besides of course all the technical stuff that you guide them and that you are the stick behind the mm. door um and that's um yeah you are their support and that that will be more and more my role because the software will be more and more automated, so that all the steps that I manually do at the moment will be uh, become uh, obsolete, obsolete. Uh, but I will still be there for um, guidance, for um, um, accountability, and uh, I will check the results. That that will be more and more the 
role of Mia. Mm, okay. And what inspired you to do this kind of work? Yeah, uh, well, uh, I uh, studied psychology and I was always in the field of neuropsychology, but um, I didn't know if I um, would have been interested in really like an academic um, uh, uh, career because, um, yeah, you often you work on something super abstract and uh, the end result is only read by maybe 50 people and uh, it, it, it ends up in a drawer somewhere. And of course, in a large process of this whole, all these studies are maybe usable, but, um, uh, but it, it attracted me that this is really applicable to the real world and can solve uh, issues. And uh, I tried it myself because I had uh, this uh, severe concentration problems and then it, I figured out it, it helped. And in a way, and that's for me, uh, um, yeah, it, it, it was definitely not a placebo effect because the effect uh, was something that, yeah, if, if you, uh, I mean, with placebo effects, it's not like, or you have a thing like a pain and uh, you can imagine or you had the, the condition before, but it's like uh, totally different. It's like a different brain state. Uh, that you never had before you can reach these with neurofeedback it's like whoa okay so that i got convinced that it really works besides the studies that i read about it of course and although there's still still scientific uh, scientifically a debate about if neurofeedback um, uh, not if it works but if it works as a, th a therapy and um, so uh, but i'm without doubt and um so after my studies i um I was watch, looking what to do, and then I thought, okay, I will start a clinic with a neurofeedback. Um, also, because I did an internship in a neurofeedback clinic, and I did my uh, a master uh, thesis uh, on the neurofeedback. Mm. And so that's how I got into this. Uh, nice. Work. And are your parents also in the medical industry? Uh, no, uh, my mother. Uh, unfortunately, passed away. She was um, yeah, she got me into the neurofeedback, um, and she uh, was definitely uh, in um, more in this field. I think that my, my father was uh, is um, well, used to work for government, and my mother was more in the healing world, and and she also was busy with uh, strong. Mm. So, and uh, that that's uh, but uh, they, no, they were not really in the a care uh, world or something active um, in the therapy world. I I, I want uh, I always like to do something that's uh, new, like new fields, and um, and if it can help people, then it's all, all the better. So that's why, um, yeah, and 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 maybe yeah, just you want to be small part of the world that gets uh, suff suffering away from the world uh, i yeah I, I wouldn't exactly know where this uh, wish comes mm -hmm. from uh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but i actually i did study also medicine before oh. but uh, i figured that it was definitely not my uh, field i i would really uh, I, i'm glad that i don't end up uh, and it didn't end up in a hospital or something <laughs> oh god <laughs> Uh, I would never, uh, or, or also not a doctor clinic or something like um, uh, a physician. No, I, I would never. I don't have a wish no, to uh, to do this. Um, yeah, with, with neurofeedback, I have like um, the n nicest. Uh, I have a relatively uh, <laughs> my clients you hear this, but I have a relatively nice. Uh, um clientele so called like people are still independent enough to come here um but i don't have like the most uh, sev severe cases i have people that are really treatable and uh because i think in the uh, more like uh, normal psychological healthcare you also have to do to deal with a lot of people that are basically untreatable like they have untreatable Depression, where maybe if even neurofeedback won't uh, won't work. Mm. 
and that's for me that's maybe too too severe that's that's like uh, i want to uh give a therapy that helps somebody forward i don't want to give a therapy that just keeps pe people at the same mm. level or something you know that that's like a how what's the expression in english for this or well, i don't think and well uh like, like, like um um yeah just uh, you go to this it's a, it's it's like bringing water to the sea yeah. like uh, or something like you don't you can't really solve the the problem of this person they are psychotic or something you can give them medicine and you can make, give them a bit structure yeah. but they will never recover fully from this condition but mm -hmm. i can let somebody fully recover from insomnia or something or mm -hmm. not fully but i can make some someone's life with adhd way more manageable and it can help them to the next step in their life so, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, and also with uh yeah also even with uh conditions like autism i can help people to be um more sociable and to get them to the next step in their life so mm. um so i never really thought about it but that may that's what uh, uh nerve impacts like maybe in the, it's a perfect balance between not uh, too severe, but severe enough to make an impact, of course. To, uh, the, the, I mean, I, I definitely have people with uh, difficult um, issues, uh, but they are, tr they are treatable. I always think about the medical industry like it is a business model. And they're really mm -hmm. there for you if you really want to get to the course of the, of the problem, to the source of the problem. And that is a really big difference from what you do. You really go to the to the yeah, how do you, uh, cool. to the core yeah. of the problem, and that's really yeah. good, you know. And then you're really helping people. But if you take a pill, for example, then you're not really solving the problem. It's a quick fix. So it's it's so mm -hmm. different. So that's why I really like what you do. And that's also when you're, for example, do holistic work. You know, you really work on your energy, and you go to the yeah problem. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think uh, yeah, the, there of course there are uh, many sides to the medical uh, world, but too, too much is indeed uh, uh, also in the psychological care is too much um, is uh, uh, focused on um, um, maintenance. Mm -hmm. Like people are uh, also. Um, there are many houses where people uh, live that cannot really live independently. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's so, I don't, uh, I think all people around are there with good intentions. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, are they actually looking for solutions, mm -hmm. am I thinking? Or is it just a way of life? I think um, for many, it's just a way of life mm -hmm. uh, that rewards, of course. But um, um, I think. Maybe some some are not even looking for solutions, like like they want to uh, go to the to a next step, really in in their mm -hmm. life uh, of independence. Mm -hmm. No, uh, it, it's like because this whole ec ecosystem around these people are is is there um, for all good reasons, but um, that uh, if if they they are not really like um, looking for therapies like neurofeedback um and because yeah there's like a um discussion about if neurofeedback works and um it's quite easy and uh, to to say that there's not enough scientific mm. proof um but i feel i notice a lack of um uh like um, um creativity and lack of um really looking for solutions and that actually prevents people from looking at things like neurofeedback or you also have related fields like photobiomodulation mm -hmm. or um, magnetic stimulation of the brain mm -hmm. um, it's because people are used to okay this person is de depressed and or not so independent and we're just going to maintain this condition and make facilitate some stuff maybe and, and that's going to be it. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so, so, yeah. Well, um, I, I would have other. I would never 
be able to work in these uh, in these uh, conditions. But I uh, and, and I would come up with other ideas. Mm -hmm. And do you get a lot of setbacks, for example, from the, the government for doing? Uh, no, no, no. Actually, the, my uh, as a business, I don't feel uh, I, uh, opposed by the government or something. No, uh, I am uh, free to. Um, to do the therapy, I, I'm, I even am uh, excluded from paying uh, vet. Wow! Um, so I don't uh, pay this because I'm a healthcare uh, provider, um, and I'm free to advertise. Uh, etc. Oh. So in in this in this way, I don't feel uh, restraints. Uh, oh, something. that's good. Okay. And I also read something about Elon Musk, who is making this chip for your brain. Uh, heard of that? Yeah. Neuralink. Uh, I think so, yes. but is it really similar to neurofeedback? Uh, no, it's no, it's it's both are related to the brain, but it's uh, different. Uh, there is like a, a sort of uh, um, um, correlation or so, sort of um, uh, uh, the, the similarity. So, but. Uh, what he is developing is uh, will be implanted in the brain um and that is the idea is that it's going to read the or at least uh, give the person who has it in inside the brain the option to um i think to uh select things um by a, a conscious act mm -hmm. like um this person will think uh about a robot arm moving somewhere, and this will be copied to a real robot arm, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what exactly the idea of Neuralink is. Uh, if they e even want to copy thoughts, um, I don't know this. But um, with neurofeedback, you, you, you mostly only read the brain, and um, the, the level of uh, resolution, something, is not that you can read somebody's my, uh, thoughts mm -hmm. or something uh you can you even need really um rigorous methods to for example even uh have uh small insight in somebody's thoughts so uh, it it can work a little bit like a lie detector the the, the brainwave measurement okay. but you need special instruments for this and special techniques it's not so easy no. and, i think it's risky um, it's, so, and, yeah, yeah, it's it's risky, and they, they do experiments with monkeys. I understood, and some were, um, have really much pain. Um, but uh, yeah, m maybe eventually it will work. But a related field to both the Neuralink and the neurofeedback is BCI, that means uh, brain computer interface, mm. and um, brain computer uh, computer interface means that. Your brain is red, and from this reading of the brain, uh, is is copied to what I told, like the, for example, the movement of a robot mm. arm, or the letters on the uh, on the screen. And then, even if you are uh, have locked locked in syndrome that you cannot move anything, you would be able to uh, measure your brain and then to to select on the monitor what you think, mm. and then uh, slowly type words. Uh, but the Speed of this is quite low, um, but I think there will be more and more advancements in this, mm -hmm. and that it can help people to uh, read their minds. And I have a small, similar um, instrument like this, besides the CAP system that I uh, meant, on that I mentioned. I also work with um, a CAP called the uh, or a system called Neurosity. And it has eight sensors on the brain, and it measures your emotional state up to a certain degree. And then, uh, for example, I can put it on, and then I can, through software, let it select uh, from my Spotify list the songs that I need to get into focus. Wow. And then it, it, it will turn my brain activity more into focus. And if it fails, it will search for better songs uh, all the time. Um, and uh, I, I did notice that it's uh, worked, but I think it's um, because it has to do with the rhythms in the music. 
but I noticed that um, but because I can um, choose several states that I want to be in. For example, I want to focus or I want uh, to uh, be creative. When I chose I want to be creative, it chooses a bit slower, uh, slower speed songs mm -hmm. um, that are more complex. And when I want to focus, it chooses uh, higher speed up-tempo songs that are um, simpler, mm. for example. Wow, it's amazing. Wow, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and uh, I, I think with um, uh, good techniques, this will be faster and faster. And um, I, the, the same company that makes my brain cap also works for, with, uh, in cooperation with another company. And they have a system uh, in the software where they read special uh, characteristics, special waves in the brain. They're called P300 waves. And they can, um, in a way, um, measure if you have focus on uh, things. Mm. And um, I'm going to study uh, the, some uh, papers that they are going to send me. But what I saw on their website, but I really need proof of this to mm -hmm. believe, uh, is that with 100% accuracy, somebody can select on the screen the objects that they uh, need. So they would just watch a certain thing on this screen and somehow the brain waves would select if it's the, the right one. And also the, um, uh, maybe the eye movement should also be monitored. I don't know how this works, but a, 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 a practical implication for this, application for this, and they say that it's already used, mm -hmm. is that you have the, the, the surgeon uh, doing a long surgeon, uh, surgery has this band on, and it uh, covers the front of the head and the back, and it measures these P300 waves. And then when this, the surgeon can be busy with both hands, and they can be covered with blood or something, mm -hmm. right? And they, or they can be both, both hands can be in the patients uh, dealing with stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. And then they can watch this uh, monitor, and by looking at an object, the, it, it will select on the monitor what they think about. And then uh, this nurse or something can see this, uh, and, and or the, the, the instrument can somehow uh, respond to this. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I should dive into this, uh, but... Um, and but they say that it has 100% accuracy, which is for me hard to believe. Mm -hmm. But um, they claim. Okay, it. that's really interesting. But also the thing with neurofeedback is that are you not taking away also the power of uh, of these disorders? I don't want to call it disorders because it's mm -hmm. another construction of the brain. For example, if you have ADHD or autism, with um, yeah. You can also have this hyper focus. Are you not taking away hit their power too when you're using neurofeedback? Uh, no, I, I see more that um, uh, you you le let the brain become more flexible. So uh, I never heard that uh, people uh, lose uh, these these capacities. Mm -hmm. For example, I. Uh, trained a, a, a lady that was into poetry and she had was this artistic type you know the um like short term uh, bad short term memory always losing her keys uh, destroyed destroyed mm -hmm. mind like a professor or something <laughs> and then uh, she did the uh, sessions and she could uh, focus more but she could still uh, also touch the poetry uh, um, uh, stream in her mm -hmm. head and uh, she just learned more. So it's not, it took some, didn't take something away, but it added something extra to her brain's uh, capacities. Wow. Um, wow, that's crazy. And, wow. and do you have maybe other examples from, uh, from clients you, uh, you helped? Uh, yes. Um, so many, uh, like I'm now training an artist. Um, and the, the, the one from uh, New York, and uh, yeah, it, it helps uh, severely. And, and, and uh, she told it's 
we did a certain treatment with four channel where she's training um, alpha, theta, and gamma waves at the same time. Um, and it gives a certain brain state that is like a healing mm -hmm. somehow. And for me, it was also new uh, I had, uh, to implement. And she told that, um, uh, yeah, she, she told it today that it um, does in uh, what 10 years of medication does, it does in one session. Wow. And uh, I was uh, I was surprised because uh, she was already uh, uh, really uh, um, yeah, pro progressing a lot from the therapy, and uh, so that that really uh, felt uh, good. Um, then I had uh, more yeah I had so many interesting cases. Also recently, I had somebody who um, uh, had. The, uh, the ear surgery. She had an ear surgery, and uh, for the surgery, a part of the brain was, uh, or what if the skull was removed, and also the brain was lifted out a bit because they had they needed access to something to the ear. And uh, after that, she had dizziness complaints, and um, I did the EEG, and it turned out that she had epileptic uh, uh, attacks. Or at least epileptic signs in the brain part that was moved, and the 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 like the the throat, nose, uh, <laughs> um, uh, ear. Uh, the doctor <laughs> the, uh, uh, thought that say, you know her um, complaints were like you know like psycho um, psycho psychosomatic psychosomatic mm -hmm. something or you know the depressed yeah. whatever. But um, I sh um, noticed this, and I, I googled a bit, and I, f I think, she, or I'm certain, she has. Um, it's called um, um, uh, the, 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 like she has a seizure attacks that stimulate certain brain waves, mm -hmm. and if the, these brain waves are stimulated, you get a feel of uh, dizziness, mm -hmm. the feeling of dizziness, and the whole world is like turning. It's really wow. inconvenient, and. Um, so I, I didn't I um, uh, didn't train this person mm -hmm. yet, but uh, it, it was interesting to uh, see and it showed what I can offer as a neurofeedback therapist because of course she went to the this uh, throat nose eye uh, <laughs> a, a doctor <laughs> a ear doctor <laughs> and uh, she also went to the ne neurologist with her complaints but they all told that it's like uh, you know psychosomatic um, and I. I'm 100% certain that it was due to this um, surgery that, you know, brain tissue is super sensitive. So what, even when they take it out carefully, it, it can somehow be slightly damaged and then it can cause an instability. And this instability can cause uh, like epileptic signs. And that's what I 100% certainly uh, certain saw in the EEG. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It's so fragile right the brain you really have to be careful what you're yes. doing so uh, i think with yes. neurofeedback you know i think it's a really safe option to train your brain yeah de definitely uh it, it, it is uh also at the moment the all one yeah the only method to train it i think in the future we will have even more advanced uh, methods uh, for um, for example, in the United States, there are centers where you can train uh, fMRI-based uh, neurofeedback. Oh. So you train really inside the brain, but um, it's not necessarily more effective, uh, mm. I think. Uh, but it's another way. But in the future, we might have you know all kind. Of, we have different instruments that can look inside the brain or something and train mm. it, uh, perhaps. And there's a company, it's uh, like a competitor of uh, Elon Musk uh, with the Neuralink, and it's called Kernel. And uh, Kernel has a like a helmet. You can uh, see it on kernel.com. Um, and this helmet um, measures like um, uh, with small laser lights, it measures the blood flow of the in, in the head. And from this comes uh, really a, a lot of data. And this data can be in, interpreted by um, artificial artificial intelligence, wow. and then it can 
um, subtract things from this that a human couldn't. Like, uh, and and maybe that will be the the future step in uh, the first future step in neurofeedback, right. because um, things that are normally only possible by MRI uh, or fMRI, that like where you are, you know, in this uh, gigantic uh, machine, mm -hmm. can be um, copied with this uh, uh, helmet. Um, and in uh, and, and and imagine what a computer can read out of all this uh, data. Yeah. And it can match and it can learn from this or something. And it, uh, eventually it could indeed uh, help you, for example, to uh, uh, with your thoughts to select uh, objects or something or to game or whatever. Um, and at the moment, this helmet uh, costs, I think, $100,000 or something. But um, I, f I see this price, of course, come down because, uh, you know, an iPhone... Uh, t 20 years ago would probably also cost, uh, you know, like uh, like uh, fifty thousand uh, dollar or more, or, or was that even possible to make? And now we can all have the uh, the iPhone mm -hmm. or something. And uh, with the helmet, uh, will be maybe a, will be the same uh, trend, I think. So I think in the future everybody has a helmet at home, training their brain. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Yes. Yeah. I I uh, understand the question. Mm -hmm. Uh, why, if it works so good, why is not everybody doing it? I also get it from uh, as a response. Uh, the people, uh, clients, of course, ask their uh, home mm -hmm. doctor, uh, "Can I do this?" And then they tell uh, the home doctor can be um, skeptical and mm -hmm. uh, can tell can tell if it's so effective. Um, why is not everybody doing yeah. it? But uh, I just think there's like. Um, there's like a barrier barrier for um, information to spread, mm -hmm. and um, uh, yeah, uh, this it, it's not like um, um, when something works instantly it's everywhere. No, there's like a path it should mm -hmm. take uh, to become more and more mm -hmm. known and more and more to uh, like accept. It. Yes, for sure. And I also want to try it. So. Okay, so we, yeah, we can get, uh, arrange it. I, I actually wanted you to send you this um, uh, headband, but I um, didn't have the battery at that uh, uh, yes. moment. But uh, yeah. we we can do it in the nice, future. Nice, because um, I am uh, what they call HSP, so high sensitive person. So after a workday, for example, I can be so overwhelmed. So I think for me, it can mm -hmm. be also really helpful. Because uh, sometimes my my head is like, yeah, exploding, you know, like there's so much information and so many energies I take in. And yeah, that can be too much sometimes. Yeah, uh, it, it, you, you could do like a alpha or alpha feeder mm -hmm. sessions. Um, and then you can recharge your battery. It's like a, a wellness form of the neurofeedback. And I could I could also um, more in detail with the EEG cap uh, look um, if you have um, uh, yes special signs in the brain, and then I can train um, your uh, in a way that it's you, uh, it's not like you will lose this uh, capacity to have get mm -hmm. all these influences, but your brain will be more effective in uh, giving. Uh, like a place for all these impressions and, oh, and it, yeah. it will be more like a, yeah. so it's like a filter in your brain um, mm -hmm. yes like a, a filter mm -hmm. filter. Um, like there are so several trainings that work for a lot of people um, also for uh, ADHD also for autism also for H HSP mm -hmm. but uh, for anybody basically and they lift your brain state to a more tranquilized state where you're still active mm. and then somehow it makes your brain uh, more effective and for example um, in a in a circus circumstance with a lot of stress impulses mm. it's easy to not uh, have to, or the stress is not coming to you but you are the mm -hmm. stress like somebody's calling and you are this uh, negative mm -hmm. thing but with but this training allows you to float a bit on top of all these impressions, both positive and negative. Mm -hmm. So being more in a calm state all the time. 
that sounds amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's like a um, uh, more, um, uh, uh, yeah, indeed, like a Zen <laughs> state. But I, I trained this, I did this training a, a lot of times, and I'm, uh, I, I would function way less uh, without. Now I can, I can handle uh, a lot of um, mm -hmm. stress, uh, not easily or something, but I can handle a mm. lot. Uh, in all kinds of ways, and uh, before I, I wouldn't be able to do this. Mm. So, I think. so nice. And what do you do for yourself to stay connected to yourself? Do you also do meditation, or what do you do? Uh, well, <laughs> at, the, at the moment, um, I, I'm, I'm uh, because uh, this home neurofeedback is a new uh, development, mm -hmm. and I need a lot of uh, systems mm -hmm. for this. So at the moment, I don't think about <laughs> myself. <laughs> But I'm, I'm just f firing it up, mm -hmm. and I'm really working mm -hmm. hard uh, to in, uh, to uh, be able to buy all these uh, home neurofeedback yeah. systems. Um, and so I have a full schedule. Um, but um, I, I, I am thinking ab about um, uh, maybe uh, this week to do some um, massages or something. Mm. To get some massage will will really help mm -hmm. me, and um, yeah, um, I should think more about myself. But at uh, at the moment, I have this goal, mm -hmm. and in half a year, I can uh, realize my uh, dream and to be like a more um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, lo location and un unbound mm -hmm. person. And then I can uh, I will get so much energy from uh, that fact that I reached uh, this. Mm -hmm. I think uh, so. It's worth now just steaming and and. Uh, um, but where what gives me a lot of um, energy normally is uh, traveling, mm -hmm. um, like uh, new new impressions, new yeah. locations. Um, but at the moment, uh, and and last yes, last year I made fourteen trips. I think. I uh, went to all kinds of places, like um, uh, yeah, Ar Argentina, uh, Poland, Turkey, G Egypt, um, and um, and this year I take it a little bit easier uh, because of these new developments, these new systems, and then after this I will have this um, digital digital nomad uh, experience. Okay. That that's my dream. Yeah, I also really enjoy that, that I live at the beach. I can just work whenever I want and whenever, yeah. whenever I want. So I can just work on my laptop and just do my thing. And I can just go to the beach in my break. And yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. But I, uh, how do you handle um, uh, all the, um, the overload, like information overload uh, that there is nowadays, uh, social media? Mm -hmm. It's like um, uh, so, so many media channels and they're just just basically too much for a person to uh, uh, to delve uh, or to, to uh, observe. Yeah, of course. And even for a normal brain, it's already really overwhelming, I guess. But for me, it's really overwhelming. But um, what I do, for example, is that I go to the gym every day in the morning. And um, I will try to go uh, without my headphones. So I go or I do meditation music. Uh, and then okay. I come back. Then I do um, some um, gratitude. What I'm uh, for. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And after that, um, I will have a cold shower. Sometimes, not always. But And then <laughs> if I have my morning routine done. Then I can just handle whatever, and then I will do my work. And if I feel overwhelmed, then I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna uh, go one step back, and I'm gonna look, okay, what is happening? You know, that's what I do. And then I just go go with my day. So yeah, and after my work, um, I try to, I like to listen to music, for example, to recharge myself because music is also a frequency. So I like yeah. to listen to music and then I'm cooking. That's also really relaxing. And yeah, and then I go to bed early again. <laughs> That's what I do. 
Okay. So, so what, what time do you go to uh, sleep? You sleep? Uh, around 10. Yeah. Well, quite yeah. early. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I try to do that because Good. I want to wake up at uh, 6.30 because I have to. You, um, you, you see uh, every morning the almost set, the sunset? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay. There's also a really good energy, by the way, the sunsets. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Especially at the sea, mm -hmm. seaside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. But, uh, yeah. And do you have like a morning or evening routine? Not right now, I guess, because you're really busy. Before, um, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, with faces, I have like a uh, uh, morning routine. Yeah. The, 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 Best. Uh, I'm not a morning uh, person, but uh, the best morning is that um, I uh, get up, then I meditate, then I uh, already sport, and sporting is for me is simple. I go. I don't go to the gym. I just run, for example, five kilometers. Mm -hmm. so. And 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 once a week I do um, fit uh, uh, with weight weight training. For me, that's uh, sufficient. Mm -hmm. um, and, and oh yeah, I do also a kettlebell. Huh? So then um, I meditate twenty minutes, I run, and then I do kettlebell. If I do this before um, that before work, that's really awesome huh? because then the whole day I think oh yeah, in the evening I should still sport. Oh no, yes, yes. I did it already. And then this yes. <laughs> this uh, this part appears every uh, several times in that uh, huh? day. Um, and and then it's like a really uh, rewarding, mm -hmm. but um, I have really troubled sticking to such a uh, routine, mm -hmm. uh, at, at, uh, especially at this uh, moment. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if I go to the next step, I will um, definitely reincorporate this in, into my life, uh, mm -hmm. because it, and especially if I live in a um, nicer uh, area with with nicer uh, city, with nice uh, mountains or something. Mm -hmm. That that would be uh, much more rewarding also to to get up. Yeah, early. that's true. <laughs> yeah, I find it really difficult in the Netherlands to wake up early, and here it's more easy. But now actually it's really cold here. It's now like ten degrees and a lot of, a lot of raining today. So today it was a little cold okay. to get up, but I did it anyway. So I'm proud of myself. But uh, I really feel like we can talk for hours, but um, I'd like to wrap it up for now. Before okay. we end this podcast, um, if everybody is interested in uh, Roland's work, please go to neurobix.nl. And follow oh, uh, sorry, uh, ne also uh, neurobix.care. That's uh, English. Watch oh, okay. 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 I will put all the links in the description for everybody to see. And also follow him on Instagram and Facebook, of course. But before we end this for all, do you maybe have some nice words to say to the audience? Um, yeah, just uh, t take care of yourself uh, and give yourself um, what you uh, deserve. Uh, and um, don't... Uh, um, yeah, uh, uh, be too too much impressed by opinions of uh, others. Mm. Uh, although be, try to be polite, of course, but uh, also don't be afraid to um, to distance people uh, from your life mm. uh, temporarily or or um, or or uh, for uh, uh, ever if 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 necessary if it um, makes your life uh, mm. better. Wow. Amazing. Thank you so much Rob, for being on my podcast. And thank you everyone for listening and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.